a lot. Amen. Glory to God. Welcome, 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 welcome to the building up of God's kingdom TV broadcast. I am Brian Morgan, apostle of building your house upon the rock. I am so elated to to be back with you here in Highland Park and, of course, the Detroit area. We want to get right back into it. We've been teaching and ministering on kingdom consciousness. And I want you to have your Bibles, get your Bibles, and let's turn to Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 33. We're going to jump right into the word after a word of prayer. Father, we just want to bless you and thank you for the privilege and honor to come before this, your people. We want to give you all praise and glory and thanksgiving for, for who you are, O oh God. We thank you, Father, for the name of Jesus. We thank you for the power of the precious Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in the midst to do any gifts of the Spirit, anything that you need to do in the TV audience that bring them forward in redemption, healing, manifestation of your goodness in their lives, peace and joy, all the wonderful things of the fruit of the Spirit. Father, we thank you for your kingdom word, O oh God. We thank you that you work through me, flow through me, speak through my mind, think through my mind, flow through the lips, these lips of clay, that your people will be blessed this morning. We give you all praise and glory and thanksgiving for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Kingdom consciousness. Having a kingdom mindset. What does that mean today? Kingdom mindset or kingdom Consciousness is to be aware of your surroundings, but have a kingdom mindset against anything that is not working in your life properly. Any darkness, any sickness on your body, any works of, of, of evil in your life today. Amen. Kingdom consciousness the kingdom of God confronts all evil. Amen. The Bible says in Luke chapter 17 that the kingdom is within you. And so you have a portion of the kingdom of God on the inside of you. And what brings forth the kingdom of God in your life is the revelation of God's word in your spirit. Amen. We all must feed on the word of God on a regular basis. This brings forth a a lethal assault against the enemy. Hold your place here and let's go to Matthew chapter uh, four. Go back. Go back to Matthew chapter four. Uh, we're going to get back. Something just came up in my spirit just that fast. Matthew chapter four and look at verse number four. Uh, start at verse one. Go back up to verse one. We're going to come on down a little bit. I want you to see this here. This just came to me by way of the Holy Ghost. He said, then when Jesus was led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. OK, he fasted. He didn't eat. And when the tempter came to to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Amen. So you see here and go, go down to verse number eight. After the devil uh, said something else to him, verse eight, he says, again, the devil taking him up into the exceed, exceeding high mountain, verse number eight, and show him all the kingdoms of the world and the, the glory of them and said unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou will fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt not Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. We see the basis or the standard, the principle of giving the enemy the word. Jesus said in verse 4 again, Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth in the mouth, out of the mouth of God. In other words, when you are tried, when opposition or anything that's in your life you must have the word of God on the inside of you in Matthew chapter 13 I believe it talks about the parable of the sower the sower soweth the word so the word of God is the word of the kingdom so the word of God on the inside of you right now you got to think now the word of God is a seed 
a, a spiritual seed. John 6 and 63 said the word is spirit and the word is life. So you must have the word in you to, in order to access it. A farmer that plants a seed into, into, into ground to have a crop, to, to bring forth corn or bring forth any type of vegetable or fruit. He must plant that seed and then water it. We have to do the same thing with the word of God. See, the enemy wants you to not be a cultivator of the word of God. He prefer you just to hear a word and never take it upon yourself to meditate the word, to study the word, to show yourself approved unto God. A workman not to be ashamed, rightly divide the word of truth. And I believe in first Peter, second, Tim, second Timothy, excuse me. And so the kingdom to have kingdom consciousness, you're going to have to have a, a word consciousness. A, a word mindset, which means you have to put the word of God on the inside of your heart. Amen. You have to download the word. Now, Matthew 6 and 33 says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then he shall add all the other things unto thee. Now, seek ye first in first in the first estate or in the first place. You need to seek ye the kingdom. Why? Because the kingdom is first, not the church. The church was birthed out of the kingdom. Go to Acts chapter one right quick. I'm kind of Holy Spirit going me in a different direction on my notes here. Go to Acts chapter one. Let me show you in the text here. Acts chapter one. Let's get over there real quick. Kingdom consciousness, having a kingdom mindset. Now, here it is, Jesus here, after his passion, after his death, burial, and resurrection, he had risen, and he was speaking here, talking to the, the uh, disciples, the apostles. And so verse 1, we'll come on down. Ah, excuse me. The former treaties have I made, O the Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach, until the day in which he was taken up after that through the Holy Ghost, had given commandment unto the apostles whom he had chosen. To whom also he showed himself after, after his passion by many infallible proofs. Notate that infallible proofs. That's a key to kingdom consciousness. There should be proof of you walking as a king. Infallible proofs being seen of them 40 days and speaking of things. Listen, things that pertain to the kingdom of God. Things that pertain to the kingdom of God. He was speaking about things that pertain to the kingdom of God. I want you to get that in your thinking. The Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. The word of God gives you the same mind as Christ. The Bible says, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. In other words, we have to have the same mindset, the same mind as Christ had when he walked. Okay. All right. The Bible says it wasn't a robbery for him to be equal to father, daddy, God, Jehovah. Amen. So it's not robbery for us to be like he was. Okay. As he is, so are we. And we're going to get into that a little bit. And so here it is. Jesus again with the kingdom talked about it for 40 days and 40 nights. That's significant. He fasted for 40 days. The enemy tempted him. He gave the enemy the word of God. Now, when the en enemy comes to you, you're going to have to give him the word. You're going to have to have the word in you now to access the power of God's word. The word of God, again, is spirit and it is life. But you need to put it in your heart and get it in your mind to renew your thinking. Remember that we are three part being. The word goes, goes into the spirit. The word renews the thinking. Then the body has to follow. So there's a step-by-step -step process, a concept, the components of God's kingdom word has to be planted in your spirit man. Amen. And so once you be able to grow up spiritually, you know, the Bible says you need the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby, right? But you don't need to stay on milk. Babies, when they come, you can't give them hard food or steak or uh, uh, chicken or things like that. The food has to be, you know, uh, w w to a point where it can go into their bodies to that can get down in their system, right? And so, as a new believer, and I, 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 by the spirit, I feel that we're we're talking to people that may understand the word a little bit more. Where you should you should get past milk and get into the meat of the word. 
Now, when you're dealing with the opposition in your life, you need to have the kingdom word in you grown up. We must mature. We must be perfected, right? And so kingdom mindset, kingdom consciousness is for us to be able to utilize what the word of God says in everyday life. Amen. To build yourself up is to build yourself up with a steady diet of the word of God. And so as we are looking at this, the kingdom consciousness is to be aware. To be in a place that now I, oh, my bills are due. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. But my God shall supply all of my need according to his riches and glory. Philippians uh, 419, right? And the Bible says 6 and 38 of Luke's give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. So you get take that word in the area of finances, right? You take that kingdom word and you put it in your heart. You decree it. You declare it. You say it. Faith come by hearing, right? And hearing by the word of God. So the more word in you, the more lethal you are against your finances, against you not having your needs met. But God said in his word, he shall supply. All of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now we're dealing with finances and get the word on finances, the kingdom word on finances. The Lord taking me in another direction this morning, y'all. Uh, get the word of God on your finances, right? Put it in your heart. Get it in your thinking. Speak it out of your mouth. And once you speak it out of your mouth, don't, don't say anything contrary to that kingdom word that you spoke. You understand what I'm saying? So in other words, you said, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. But the next second you say, oh, I'm broke, busted and disgusted. I don't have nothing to pay my bills. Now you nullify or cast down those that 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 word of faith you just spoke. So the kingdom word has to always be said no matter what it looks like. Amen. No matter what it looks like. We look not at the things which are seen. Go to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter. Lord, taking me somewhere. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Go there right quick. Lord have mercy. I'm on another trail by the Holy Ghost. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 right quick. I want somebody in the audience, somebody on TV need to hear this. Glory to God by the Spirit. So I'm going to let the Holy Ghost rule me because <laughs> he's the leader of the church. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Somebody need this. Glory to God. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Let's get there right quick. I didn't plan this. It's just happening. Now, let's look at verse 13. Hallelujah to Jesus. Uh, verse 13 of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. This is the second letter of the Apostle Paul to the church of Corinth here. In verse number 13, we having the same spirit of faith. There go to your spirit right there. According as it is written. That's the kingdom word right there. I believe... And therefore have I spoken. Now, the kingdom word that Jesus had in the wilderness, when he spoke to the devil, the devil left him. Why? Because he, he had the word of faith in his heart. Jesus Christ had the word, the word of the kingdom. Okay? And so when he spoke, the demons moved. Satan got out of his way. Amen? We are supposed to do the same thing. Look what it said. But having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and, believe and therefore speak. Verse 14, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, for the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the or re, redound to the glory of God. Verse 16, for which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Let me let me deal with that right quick since the Holy Ghost got on me on another trail this morning. Your outward man is your natural man. Your, your dirt man is made of flesh. Your flesh man is separate from your spirit. Okay? So it's perishing. It's getting older. We, the Bible says 70 years and some say 120 years that we are uh, guaranteed or, or God gives us on the earth. And it, everything is based on you doing what God called you to do. As long as you do what God called you to do, you'll stay around a little longer. Trust me. Amen. They couldn't kill Jesus because he hadn't fulfilled what he was supposed to. So the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the, and the Gentiles, they couldn't kill Jesus because Jesus wasn't finished. You're the same way. They can't. Nothing. Corona can't kill you if you're in the will of God. Amen. And you got this word in your heart and the anointing upon your life. 
the the devil uh, the devil coronavirus you got to put it under too speak to it like jesus spoke to satan because corona came from the devil yeah i wouldn't believe that but i'm gonna tell you where it came from it didn't come from god there's only two places it could have came from the devil or god god didn't send that to to uh, uh this world amen the enemy uh because of probably disobedience somebody you know, judgment comes and things happen, but this situation, the enemy had a place in an opening to do something. I'm not going to get into that, but just trust me with that. The enemy did this. Amen. Now, back to the text here. So, your outward man perish, which means it dies, goes back to the dust, and your spirit goes to be with God. Absent from the body and present with the Lord. It's in the Bible, First Thessalonians. Amen. Verse 17, look at this. For our light afflictions, excuse me, which is but for a moment working for us a far more exceeding eternal weight of glory while we look not. This is what I want you to get in verse number 18 on this new trail that the Lord has taken me that I ain't planning to go to. <laughs> while we look not at the things, things which are seen. That don't make any type of natural sense, do it. Don't look at the things which you're looking at. Right, right. Check out what he said. For the things which are seen are temporal, temporary. Or subject to change. Why? Because you're going to speak the word of faith. No matter what you see, no matter what circumstance, no matter what situation is going on in your life, you're going to speak the word only. And this is for somebody right now. Oh, glory to God. You have to begin to put your mouth on that situation according to the word of faith. The word of the kingdom. You have to speak against this enemy, whatever it is, corona, uh, 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 lack of money. Uh, a wayward relationship, anything that's dark, the kingdom word is the answer. Amen. So it says, look not at the things which are seen naturally because your inward man is getting new day by day. With what? The word of God. See, the word of God is your spiritual food. Jesus said, man, I see what the Holy Spirit has done. It's the Holy Spirit, you very, you got me. The word of God <laughs> Jesus said in the wilderness, he said, the word of God, man shall not live by bread alone, natural food. But every word he should live that proceedeth out of the mouth of God should you live. So here it is with this kingdom teaching this, this morning. I'm laughing because the Holy Spirit is funny. Listen, <laughs> your spirit man needs to eat the word. And this is the problem that the Holy Spirit has given me. You don't have enough word in you. To combat your problem. But I'm here to tell you saint. Beloved of God. If you would meditate on the word. Like he told Joshua. You will make your way prosperous. And then you will have good success. I'm trying to tell you. I have to do the same thing. I have to meditate the word. I have to study the word of God. On a regular basis. Consistently. Daily. He said meditate day and night. Joshua 1.8. I'll show you. I ain't going to go there. But I'm going to tell you. Then it's 2 Timothy. 1 Timothy says, study to show yourself approved unto God. Right? A workman not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. That's for both all of us. Amen. So look at this. Here it is. He said, but the things which are not seen. Right? For the things which are seen are temporal. They're temporal because your inward man is growing in the spirit. Go back up. Go back up to that verse again in verse number uh, 16. For which cause we faint not. We don't get weary and quit. No, no, we don't do that. Especially the believer of God. If you're a believer, you don't quit. It says, for which cause we faint not. For though our outward man, our natural body perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. How? By studying and meditating the word and decreeing and declaring like a king. I've seen Joshua, 20, uh, Job 22 and 28. He said, you shall, you should decree a thing and it shall be established unto you. You should decree a thing and it shall be established unto you, which means you have to decree and declare the word of God for yourself. Hallelujah to Jesus. Okay. Romans chapter 10. <laughs> oh Lord. Hallelujah. So you got to let the Holy Spirit use you. Like right now, I got a whole kingdom consciousness to teach, but the Holy Spirit got me in another, whole another vein. Romans chapter 10, go there. <laughs> Glory to his holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Now here, verse 17, I just want to show you this text. I got some minutes here. So then faith cometh, listen, 
So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by what? The word of God, right? So we have in the same spirit of faith. We just saw in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. We have the same spirit of faith, which means every believer that received Jesus as Lord started off with the same amount of faith at the same time. Uh, I, I run tracks in the in, uh, in the blocks. I know some guys ran track in the blocks. Everybody start off in the hundred hundred meter dash. Everybody started off in the blocks at the same time. But sometimes more folks get to the finish line before somebody else. Okay, if y'all know what I mean. Why? Because of the time they put in growing as an athlete to come out of the blocks to run a hundred meter dash. Right. So we st all start with the same measure of faith. It says. That measure means a portion, a limited portion, but we start off with the same measure of faith. I am still talking about a kingdom word that you need to, to use in your life every day. Amen. And so having the same measure of faith comes by this. So then faith cometh. How does it come? By hearing what you're hearing today and hearing, double hearing. Hearing the word of God on a regular basis. Sometimes you got to get your earplugs and turn off that music you'll be listening to. And begin to hear the word so it can get down in your heart. And build your kingdom, your kingship up. Amen. So you can begin to speak the word. If you're sick, glory to God. There's words for, for you being sick. If you have something that the enemy has put on your body. Amen. There's a word for it. Jesus took our infirmities. He bare our sicknesses, right? The Bible says, Psalms 107 and 20, he sent the word and healed them. Amen. Let's go there right quick. I want you to show this. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God got me teaching on faith today. Glory to God. Go to Psalms 107. I want you to put your eyes on it, and I'm going to go to Proverbs 2. Oh, Lord. 107 and 20. Look at this text. 107 and 20. Hallelujah. Let me get to 107. Here it is. A little bit further there, Brian. He sent his word. Listen to what it says in 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Y'all see that? Go back to 103. 103, and then we go to Proverbs 4. Look at the Holy Spirit. Proverbs, I mean, Psalms 103, and we're going to go to Proverbs 4 after this. The word of the kingdom. This is what I'm giving you today. The word of the kingdom. The Holy Spirit is giving this thing so different today. But I, I enjoy I'm enjoying it. I hope you are. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Talking about God got benefits for you. <laughs> who forgiveth all thine iniquities and who healeth. Listen to what he said here. Who healeth, who heals. We don't say healeth in today's uh, vernacular. He healeth all thy diseases. Amen. This is what the word of the Lord is saying. He healeth all your diseases. Go to Proverbs 4. I'm giving you some more. Glory to God. There's some good stuff, boy. Ooh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 4. Let me go over. This is the word of the kingdom today for you. This is the word of faith being taught today. Wow. Hallelujah. Look at verse number 20. Proverbs chapter 4, verse number 20. Let's get there. Got a couple minutes, I believe. My son, attend to my words. He said, attend to his words, which means pay attention to my word, the kingdom word. Pay attention to this, this man on TV, Brian L. Morgan, speaking to you about the word of faith and the word of the kingdom. Amen. Pay attention to my words. Incline thy ear unto my sayings. Listen to the word. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Right. Let not. Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. Keep your eyes on the word of God, right? Because it goes in the eye gate and let it go in the ear gates to get down in the heart so you can put it out of your mouth and bust the devil right upside the head. Hallelujah. He hear me talking. Devil, that's for you. Amen. And he said, verse number, uh, in the midst of thy heart, verse 22, for they are life. Look what the word of God is. The word of God is life unto those that find them, plural, and health. Translated here in the Hebrew, medicine. Hebrew shata. Glory to God. Y'all see that? I got that in the in the margin here. Medicine. Because that's it's translated. Health is medicine. The word of God is medicine, saints of God. To all your flesh, your heart, your lungs, your immune system, your brain, your body, your cells. You have to speak the word of faith. 
You have to speak the word of the kingdom against this principality and power. Glory to God. Amen. And so, and so here it is. Your job is to be conscious of the kingdom, right? To have a mindset of the kingdom. But you won't win unless you let the word get in your heart. And then you can't just be quiet. A situation come, you need to have the word in your body, in your spirit, in your heart to speak against any situation and circumstances trying to stop you from being successful. I have to do the same thing, saints of God. Just because I'm called into the ministry to do this. No, 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 no. Every person that's called by his name, every person that's born of the spirit of God, have to do the same thing. We are in a battle. We are in a spiritual war. This is not a natural war. I need y'all to get this now. We're not fighting yet, Ephesians. Go to Ephesians real quick. My time going out, but let me get this over. Boy, I didn't plan to give y'all this, but the Holy Ghost did. I told him to lead me, but he's just doing what I asked him to do. Glory to God, and I'm letting him. Ephesians chapter. Go real quick to Ephesians. Glory be to God. Let me get over there real quick. Got to bring my... Uh, iPad so I can get to these scripts a little faster for you. Hallelujah. My daughter say, I think, when, I think my sister or somebody said, you need to get your iPad. You always running through those scriptures. I say, well, at least I know where they are. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Amen. Go to Ephesians and chapter uh, 6. For we wrestle not, verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, right? Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, there is an invisible realm. And I can get into some stuff that in the spirit. But I'm not going to get into it right now. I just want to give you base, some, some baseline teaching for your kingdom faith. We don't wrestle against folk. We don't wrestle against folk. We wrestle against principalities and powers. There's somebody, something, a demon spirit, somebody is influencing, trying to stop you. And that's, that's, I'm out of time. But listen, let me end it with this. If this has been a blessing on you, a screen is going to come up and give you an opportunity, an invitation to sow. If you want to, if you can, okay, by the spirit, sow a seed, bless the TV broadcast. Uh, I'm Apostle Brian Morgan. I thank you for tuning in this Sunday. I'll be back next, next week, 9 a.m. And we're going to get back into it. This was a Holy Spirit taught word. I did not plan to go this way, but thank God for the Holy Ghost. Father, we bless you and thank you for this, your people that heard your word today. We just want to give you praise and glory and thanksgiving that they take this word and eat it. Get it in their hearts, get it in their minds and act upon it in Jesus name. God bless you. I love you.